What's up, y'all? That is a tune called the Concertina Reel. Unfortunately, not played on a concertina. Played on the tin whistle, so if you're interested in doing that, stick around and we'll break it down. As we always do, we're gonna start with the basic melody, nice and slow, pick up the A part and then the B part, and then we'll break down the ornaments and some of the options that you can get out of this tune. If you are interested in really going on a deep dive of the excruciating minutia and all the details that we could shake out of this one, please do join me on my Patreon. I got a much longer form video there. We really deep dive on it. So check that out if you're interested. In the meantime, here's the A part. of the A part anyway. It sort of repeats a lot of that and just the last half is, is done. So here's that, the second half then, so we get that. Right, that's the whole thing. We'll run it all the way through the whole A part, which would of course double if you're playing it uh, in a session environment, but we'll just run through once through the A part here, see how much you can get. Here we go. through most of that. Run it a few times, make sure you get the, uh, the the groove of that down, and make sure you get the feel of that down and the notes locked in before we dive in here with any of the ornaments, but we're going to cover the B part next. Basic melody, as usual, jumps up to the second octave. Here we go. Hopefully at least some of that sounded familiar. The back half of that was the same as the A part, and the beginning of it is really just bouncing between an A and a D. A fair few times, and then you can make it interesting by way of ornaments, which of course we'll get to. Here's the second half of the B part. Again, hopefully that sounds fairly familiar because that's how the first half the yeah that's how the first half ended. We'll play the whole B part all the way through first and second half here. We'll get once through. So here we go. Hopefully you're able to pick that one up. Get that whole thing good and solid under your fingers before we dive in with the ornaments, but if you're ready for that, let's check out a few options. A lot of slides you could start with there. Kind of bouncing off of that G for that uh, good strong opener to the note. I kind of like doing that anyway. And really sliding, kind of grinding off it. This whole tune has a bit of that slidey sort of feel, or at least can. Uh, so if you want to use a fair few slides on this, it would probably work pretty well. I think it's kind of a neat sound. <laughs> Alternately, I would usually end up doing a, a, a short roll on that one, just to give it something different, so it's not just constantly slide, slide, slide. But, you know, that's up to you. See what works. So, here we go. That's, to me, the hook of this tune. That's sort of the, the bit that makes it what it is. I'll almost always slide those, but I'll also alternate with a couple of taps there. You know, simple roll, uh, simple uh, short rolls, like I mentioned in the first one, and then sliding around there. Alternating slides and short rolls, just to mix it up a little bit, but that's typically what I would do with that, giving it that, that slidey groove. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, the only thing I'm doing on that whole phrase, uh, mostly because it's tricky and I have to think very hard to get that right, is on the well, the kind of the walk down bit. Uh, sorry, see, there we go. I told you I was gonna screw it up. So. As I go hit those uh, A, I'm going uh, B to A. As I go from B to A, I'll pop that top finger off, that uh, kind of earthquakey ornament that I've talked about a fair few times, and then going from F sharp to E. As I go from F sharp to E, popping that top finger off. So that's really about the only thing I'm gonna do there again because I'm kind of concentrating and making sure that I don't screw up the melody. The beginning of the B part is the reason I like this tune so much because you can start to work in a couple of crans if you're at that point, hopefully you are. Because again, all we have in the basic melody is bouncing between A and D. Right? Not a whole lot there. So you have to figure out some way to make it interesting. A cran is a good option because it's really bubbly and you have, you have some time for you have three high Ds in a row. If you need to brush up on that, the way that I'm doing crans is ring finger, middle finger on the bottom hand, ring finger, uh, sorry, ring finger, index finger on the bottom hand, middle finger on the bottom hand. There's lots of ways to do it. That's my way. See what works for you. And back into that slidey bit on the beat. Now, alternately, you could do triplets if you either didn't feel like crans were working well or you just wanted to mix it up. So, making sure that you're getting that, um, that, that accidental G note which you can get off a triplet. Quick refresher on that. As you go B, C natural, as you're kind of hitting that and sliding in through a G there and then to a D. Ah. Right, so you can use that in place of the crayon if you wanted to. Then that all repeats and you can do it again. Nothing really different there, except as I hit that that um, the final high D there, I kind of want to lean on that to signify that we're done with the cranny bit. And you can do that same walk down phrase there, uh, doing that earthquake ornament as you walk, as you go down, if you want. That's what I do with this tune. Let me know what you think. Again, if you want a deep dive and uh, go for some some really more uh, minutia. Let me know on Patreon. Feel free to jump over there. Otherwise, I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.